Shalom, and you're now locked in here. It's like Talk TV when you get nothing but the raw and the real whenever I'm in front of the camera. So make sure y'all show the page some love, like, subscribe, and share. Shalom. And greetings and welcome back to another episode here at is a like talk tv where you get the full 100 whenever i'm in front of the camera and no paid media points now that's right family you see the title you see the thumbnail we got mr r kelly um in the headlines this morning and um you know he breaks his silence for prison and kind of speaks on this case a little bit and he basically kind of goes into uh how Tasha K basically worked with the government and basically uh, undermined this case, basically, you know, set him up. And uh, we're going to be getting to some of that audio uh, here in a few seconds. Um, so I also want to give a shout out to uh, Corey Hope to his channel and basically giving R. Kelly a platform uh, where he was to be heard. Uh, you know, because we're living in a time where, you know, the media, the media will paint a narrative a certain particular way. And then it'd be a whole nother situation that's going on behind the scenes. And um, I, I I can't speak in regards to R. Kelly and everything he's been charged with. But I believe that he's being railroaded uh, on this particular case. And I'm going to be explaining to you uh, why um, after we get done listening to his audio. And um, I'm going to be explaining to you how R. Kelly is getting ready to be coming home too uh, real soon um, on these cases. Um but at any rate, we know his name has been uh, overshadowed by, you know, child pornography and all of this stuff. We know about the sex tape that came out uh, years ago. And I think it's crazy because that same woman that was in that tape uh, did not cooperate with the government. That case was uh, acquitted. But then that same woman came and testified and, you know, all this new. So it's just it's weird, man. And, and, I, and I think that a lot of these entertainers um this is this is their classic uh move when they when they when they when they don't have nothing else to lock you up on and they need to lock you up because you got to understand what 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 their whole objective is is the music catalog okay and i'm gonna get into that a little bit um after we get into the audio but the thing with these entertainers is is that when these guys come into fame a lot of time these guys are sleeping with a lot of different women and a lot of these women are not going to be women that they're going to be with um you know for the rest of their life so it's easy for the government to go back years later and grab somebody and say oh well you know this guy he he raped me or he molested me or he did all this other stuff and they use these people to put people behind um bars you know we just saw it in the bill cosby case we saw it years ago in the tupac case where there was you know no nothing and this guy was convicted sent to jail and the woman even know that this guy did not rape him you know and and, and if i was of tupac state i don't know what they could do now but i would have found some type of civil suit against the government or something for wrongly you know being wrongly charged they lied on him and all type of stuff so they do this in order to uh lock our uh uh, black brothers our Israelite brothers up um, in jail so that you know they can rob them for you know their catalogs their money or whatever the case may be so uh, I think this is what's going on here in the R. Kelly case uh, but let's let's play the audio let's let him speak and then I'm gonna come back and give you guys some commentary on my own to accept this call press 5 to block this call and all future calls press you may begin speaking now brother Rob Oh yeah, it's all good, man. Give it to me. I'm. I want you to get it out. You don't wanna find out the hard way. Listen <laughs> to the song where the present plays. When a woman, mama told me a long time ago, it ain't nothing you can do about it. I'm just making sure that's my voice, bro. Making sure you know that's my voice. That's your voice. I can't stop this. Yeah, no, that ain't him talking. That ain't him. Yeah. But anyway. No, that's your voice, man. That's that voice everybody has uh, grown to love, man. Uh, I mean, I don't even know if you remember me from at the basketball court at the Wild 63rd and different things. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Trust me, I do. It's me, bro. It's me, bro. I, we, I, I hope that we find a way to make some shit happen in this thing. Yeah, we, yeah, we in all of them. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's what's yeah. up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just in a kicking time in a casket right now, buried alive, kicking. That's all. 
Oh man, we I I, I really believe you gonna get up out that motherfucker soon. It's a test of your patience right now. But brother, this information, uh, most people don't know this. So it's good you're giving it to us. Okay, cool. Well, here I go. Okay. Bear with me. Tasha K, who has publicly stated on all of her YouTube platforms that she shared my federal law enforcement information with my girlfriend at the time who after seeing that restricted information became very, very angry with me to the point she came to the visit at the MCC in Chicago where I was being detained. And at that visit, she did nothing but curse me out, telling me about things I had said to my other girlfriend, things I had told my other girlfriend and my attorney of which neither of those things she should have known about because I was only talking to my other girlfriend on the BOP's phone and I only talked to my lawyers on the BOP's phone so how could she have known about not only my conversations with my other girlfriend but also with my attorneys how could she have known she would repeat exactly what I said on the emails to my other girlfriend and she was very upset that I had given my other girlfriend a nickname which was Cookie which by the way they talk about that in, in the search one where I called my other girlfriend Cookie in the search one and she yelled at me saying I know you call her Cookie don't fucking lie to me I saw the emails and she was right I did give my other girlfriend that nickname, Cookie. But how did she know? Who showed her my emails? Then she went on yelling out things like, I also heard you telling your attorney that she was not going to leave your, her for me. In which was right again. Because I did talk to my attorney and tell him that and more. Then she yelled out and said, don't fucking lie to me because I heard you talking on the phone. I knew, I know your fucking voice. And when she said that to me, I was dumbfounded trying, trying to figure out how the hell she knew these things. She stated, she started calling me liars and all kind of names, telling me to get rid of my other girlfriend. And if I didn't, then she was going to leave and do what she had to do. And I told her I was not going to leave my other girlfriend. But if either of them wanted to leave, then I would respect that and honor that. And that wasn't the answer she wanted to hear. In fact, it, was, it only made her angrier. And when she saw that yelling and cursing me out and threatening me was not going to change my mind, she told me I had done. She told me I had no idea what I had done. And after that, she left the visit. That was the last time I had seen her. But I know without a doubt that when she left that visit, she was furious and scorned by whatever emails had seen between me and my other girlfriend, phone calls between me and my attorneys, obviously. And on top of all of that, I had told her I was not leaving my other girlfriend for her, even after she had threatened me. This incident took place in 2019. So when I went to trial in New York in 2021, the same girlfriend that had come to see me at the visit in 2019, who is now my ex-girlfriend, had become the government star witness testifying against me in that New York trial. And she definitely lived up to... This call is from a federal prison. And she definitely lived up to the name star witness. The reason I say that is because every bit of anger, 
every bit of jealousy and hatred that I saw in her eyes at that visit back in 2019 was the same anger, jealousy, and hatred that I saw in her eyes when she was on the witness stand. Except it had grown and now looked like a woman that was truly scorned, seeking revenge, and had the whole government backing her up. Well, now I have a, now I have obtained a, a search warrant that was executed on the BOP disciplinary hearing officer A, who the government continues after four years calls her officer A. The search warrant on officer A was executed back in February 2020 before I had ever gone to trial. The search warrant shows the search warrant shows that the BOP officer had illegally accessed my federal law enforcement information 153 times within a six month period. Which means for six months she was doing this. The search warrant shows the BOP officer A had illegally scanned 12 pages of my federal restricted law enforcement information and sent it to her own personal Gmail account. Her own personal Gmail account. The search warrant also shows that the BOP officer A had illegally shared my private restricted law enforcement information with a famous and very influential blogger by the name of Tasha Kelly. The search warrant shows that Tasha K had illegally received all of my federal restricted law enforcement information from the BOP officer A. And the search warrant also shows that Tasha K illegally shared my private information while having glasses of wine with the entire world, including people who were illegally influenced by that federal restricted law enforcement information becoming a government star witness against me in my case. If all this was in the search warrant, which was executed on February 2020, then this means that the government knew about BOP Officer A and the blogger Tasha K before I had ever gone to trial. So if this is the case, if the government was knowledgeable about all these crimes being committed against me, all of my federal law enforcement information being stolen, shared by BOP Officer A, Bagatasha K, government witness, government witnesses being tampered with, why did the trial continue on without a full investigation being done? Why weren't there's any charges brought against BOP officer A and Tasha K. These were federal charges. These were federal crimes being committed. Yeah. When the government was well aware of it, there is a search warrant, a search warrant that confirms their knowledge of these crimes. The officer was well aware of the possibilities of what giving all of my federal information to a blogger could do to me and my case. Officer A knew that it could hurt my case, in which it did. This is not just some DOP employee or some security guard we're talking about, but this is a judge in the Bureau of Prisons who committed these federal crimes against me. There is a professional code of ethics that these people are supposed to follow, that they are trained to follow. And they took a note promising you, me, and the public that they would follow that code of ethics. Because that code of ethics represents what? Integrity, honesty, law, and justice are supposed to look like. It's supposed to represent what? Our constitution, our due rights, and our equal rights are supposed to look like. Which is why this disciplinary hearing officer A and what she did is problematic. She showed no integrity, no honesty, no kind of respect for that code of ethics. She showed no respect for her job, her colleagues, the law, 
for our judicial system. When she decided to break those laws, jeopardize my rights to a fair trial, which ultimately jeopardized my life and my freedom. Now, some people, they're going to say, well, he had his day in court. He was found guilty by a jury of his peers. Well, here's the problem with that. The jury. They do absolutely nothing about a federal BOP disciplinary hearing officer still in it, scanning, sharing all of her restricted jail records by recording phone calls with a YouTube blogger who was sharing those jail records with a with government witnesses at the very same trial that that jury was sitting in. And I know that there are people out there that may not like me. Who believe everything they hear about me. It's okay. Because you are entitled to your opinions of me, R. Kelly. And I respect that. But my constitutional rights they're supposed to look just like your, your constitutional rights. My due process, R. Kelly's due process, is supposed to look just like your due process. There should not be a celebrity's version of the Constitution or due process. My freedom is not a celebrity. My freedom is not a color. It is not a price tag or some prosecutor's trophy. But my freedom, it lies in the midst of the investigation of this BOP officer. So now family, we just listened to R. Kelly. He just spoke, you know, um, you know, from, from jail. And as we can see, you know, he still got the, he still got the flow, he still got the vocals, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, he basically explains how he just explained how Tasha K and the government basically worked together before his trial or anything even started, how they went into confidential information. You know what I'm saying? And then not only did they go, did, did she, did Tasha K get information that she was supposed to have, you know, but she got this information from the government and then she took that information and shared it with the victims and the witnesses that was in this case you know and like uh r kelly brought out he was like the, the 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 jury did not hear any of this evidence um when they were hearing the case okay and so they were just judging based off of you know the information that was presented in that case but that information was not presented that you know they had went into um his you know into his 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 personal history that was not supposed to be released and then you got tasha k here working with the government um getting this information which is basically violating federal code and laws and stuff like that and then she shares this information with the witnesses and all of this stuff so really it should have been a mistrial because you know the, uh, of all of the stuff that actually happened you know surrounding this case you know what i mean so it's just like it's a whole lot of stuff that's going on underhandedly that's not being explained to the public and all we all we doing is getting these big headlines you know the disgrace r b singer this and that but what about all of these other people that's breaking the law and doing all of this foul stuff you know and they're doing this because they want to get their hands on that catalog and this is what they do family they're going to run you through that court system they're going to you're going to spend all this money you're going to spend money on lawyers you're going to spend money on you know appeal lawyers and all of this stuff because this is the phase that he's in now so he already spent money for you know the attorneys for for the case and then now he has to spend more money on the appeals lawyers you know in order to you know try to get them home you know so He's spending some money on this case, you know, and this is their whole objective. We've got to get this money out of you by all means necessary. And they're doing this because they want that catalog. This is what people have to understand. And these people um, like the Tasha K's of, the, of today, you know, and once again, this is uh, this is a sister. OK, this is a is a like this is a woman who. Uh, you know, they'll sit up here. These people will sit up here and say, oh, well, you know, the black man is the black man. But it's it's people like Tasha K that that that's underhanded 
and you know they work with the government and they bring people down um just because you know they're just trying to have some type of content they're trying to get likes and views and you know all this other stuff they want to be viral they want to be popular they want to be known as and they're going to run all type of red lights to get into these positions of power you know so at the end of the day right um let me say this there's an article and i'm going to leave this article um it was uh put out on um, NPR and it was it was put out February 1st right and it basically brings out how it says R. Kelly victim says Chicago prosecutor made a mistake in dropping sex abuse case right so what they did is is that um, and you know uh, the charges that he had uh, out of Chicago this is what they said right they said that uh, that the uh, the state's attorney said that she was dropping these cases, right? And she said, uh, she says, R. Kelly is already facing a stern punishment in federal court, okay? Uh, Fox said that with Kelly likely to serve extensive sentences in prison, her office needs to focus on other abuse cases. A judge dismissed the case on Tuesday after Fox announced the move, okay? So basically what, the, what this prosecutor was reasoning was like, hey, listen, he's got all this time already. He's gonna be an old man before he get out. So we're just dropping the charges, right? Uh, it says uh, Fox noted that a federal court in Brooklyn, New York, sentenced R. Kelly. I mean, sentenced Kelly to 30 years in prison last June. She added that pending sentencing, Kelly faces 10 to 90 years in prison from a conviction in the Illinois federal court last summer. Uh, and she said she goes on to say, "I understand how hard it was for these victims to come forward and tell their stories." Fox says, praising the women for their courage. Though her attorney, David Fitz, now listen to what David Fitz said, um, told NPR that she is disappointed and concerned about the potential effects that dropping the case could have other abusers, uh, could have on other abusers and victims. So basically what they're saying is, is that, and this is how R. Kelly is getting ready to come home. So by them dropping these charges, right? Okay. The lawyer was basically saying that they believe that R. Kelly, that that in order that what they should have did is it should have said that if uh and i'm gonna just read this this little excerpt it says the cook county state attorney should have proceeded with the case until the appeals were done or should have been sought or should have sought an agreement whereby r kelly agreed not to appeal his federal convictions in exchange for dropping charges in cook county the state's attorney decision to simply dump the case leaves the community vulnerable to this dangerous man if he wins the appeal. So what's, so what's going on here is that he's going to win that appeal and that 30 year sentence that, that he was given is going to be vacated. And the other case where they just gave him a year concurrent with the with the other sentence, he's going to already been to serve that year. It's going to be time served on that. So once he beat the appeal in New York, then... Uh, it's going to be game over. He's going to be out of jail. Okay. It's, that's, that's getting ready to happen. It's already been set up for him to come home like that. You know what I mean? Um, so he's getting out of jail. Just make no mistake about it. Whether it's, you know, this year, next year, he's going to win that case up in New York. Them appeal lawyers are going to get that appeal. They're going to either give him a, a new trial and hear the thing, or they're going to uh, throw it out because of the, because of the, um, you know what the government did by giving out his information and then working with a blogger because think about this family they should be reprimanded um tasha k and the government for what they did they it, there should be charges filed on them because they violated that man and went into personal records that they were not supposed to do like family like listen to this they took his his information and gave to the victims phone calls that this guy was having with his lawyers and all this stuff why would they take that and do that this is a family this is a this is a dismissal that's that's coming he's going to beat this appeal but they had to drag his name through the through the mud through the ringer first in order to uh uh you know disgrace him or whatever the case may be but all of this stuff is bogus man how are they taking his phone calls that are that's private you can't take uh uh, 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 phone calls from attorneys that are private between the 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 the, the, the lawyer and the and, and the person that's hired them. That's 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 privacy. You can't be taking that information and giving that information to witnesses and all of this stuff. And this is before the trial even started. So no one understand that he's going to win this case on the uh, on the uh, on appeal. 
and um, you know it's just a lesson to be learned um, um, in this case you know so I want you guys to leave your thoughts down in the um, comment section what do you guys think about the R. Kelly case do you believe that he's guilty do you guys believe that Tasha K is bogus for working with the government in order to bring down R. Kelly you know releasing all of his this private and personal information that they, that they were not supposed to be uh, releasing or even tampering with and then taking that information and, and giving it to the witnesses the people that's going to be testifying in the case you know do you guys believe that 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 that's righteous that that was fair so just leave your thoughts down um in the comment section on what y'all believe on this case but yeah r kelly breaks his silence he tells us uh what actually happened in the case um i honestly believe that he's going to be home and appeal um here real soon once they overturn um the stuff up in new york so uh this is y'all report today on R. Kelly, um, and I'm signing off here on uh, Is It Light Talk TV. Shalom.